Hey, it's Ray, AI Ninja, and I've got an exciting episode. This is a full-length demo of my favorite AI tool that's out there, Poppy AI. I'm going on my third month of using this tool. I use it every single day. I'm a heavy user of this. I use it for my brand, AI Ninja, for content creation, my newsletter. I revamp my website, my website copy using this. It uses Claude, it uses ChatGPT, and it allows me to bring in all kinds of elements, which I'll show you in this demo, which is so powerful. So if you're a content creator, if you're thinking about becoming an online entrepreneur, this tool to me is a game changer. And I don't say that lightly. So I'll show you the power of this. So I was thinking about a use case for what I want to show you. And I was talking to a friend of mine that's a teacher. And she said one of her biggest complaints is coming up with lessons plans. She says he has this dreadful feeling you know, like on Sunday afternoon, and you know you got to come up with some lesson plan, or so you're spending hours finding the perfect video. How do you find engaging activities? So I thought, well, this would be a good use case demo. So I talked to her about, got some insight on like, what does it take to create a lesson plan? And with that information, I decided to show you how I'm going to do that here. So I'm not a teacher, but based on my conversation with my friend, I think you'll see just how powerful this Poppy AI is. So let me break down what we're going to do, and then I'll start sharing my screen. I'm going to show you some basic teacher templates, like what she uses for lessons plans. I'll show you how I collect engaging content from many different sources, and then we'll watch as Poppy AI pulls it all together and comes up with a lessons plan, a worksheet, student instructions, and it all works together perfectly. So let me share my screen and let's get started. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the Poppy AI whiteboard. And I've already got some elements in here, but normally what you would say is just a blank whiteboard. So let me go over what is included in Poppy. If I look over here, think of Poppy as like kind of Miro, Notion, ChatGPT and Claude all had a baby and this is what we get. And so I've got this whiteboard where I can bring in elements and then connect them to a large language model chat, either in Claude or ChatGPT. Over here on the left, we have start recording, which I can do a video memo as a think of something to fly and I can attach it. I can attach a mind map and create a mind map in this uh, whiteboard and have that be part of the context. I can create an image or attach an image, JPEG or PNG. I can attach a YouTube video and I'll actually transcribe that video and have all the content in there. Same thing with a TikTok video, same thing with an Instagram. I can also add a text box and type things I can also attach a URL website and get the context of that. And then I can add documents like Word documents and Excel spreadsheets and PDFs, for example. And then we can create groups. So these are the groups that I've already created. Now, you don't have to do things in groups. You can bring individual elements in. But I like to group things because I think it makes it a little more powerful. So what I did is I went down here and I had a folder called this groups down here and created a group. And the first one that I created had to do with engaging content, okay? Okay. So what we're looking at here, just remember, if you think in the context, what we're trying to do is create a lesson plan for middle school students about climate change. So I went on to TikTok and I found three TikTok viral videos that I thought was interesting that I'd like to extract some of the content from. And I added them here into this group by simply going over here, clicking the TikTok, putting in the URL, and then adding it to this group. Now I did the same thing with YouTube, clicking the uh, YouTube video, putting the URL, and here I grabbed Bill Nye's a science guy, two videos, and I did the same thing with this climate scientist answering Earth's questions, so I added there. Now I can also add a website, which is what I did here, a URL for NASA's climate kids, and essentially what I did is, if you look at the website, this is the URL, I copied it and added it here. Now notice even on here, there's a, a YouTube video, and I thought, oh, I'd like to get the uh, contents of that YouTube video from NASA. So I could click right here, copy video URL from that NASA website, and then essentially add this YouTube video like I was showing you, click here, and then add the URL, and it'll add that video into our group. So you can see it's transcribing the video, okay? So now I could continue to add more, but I think for demo purposes, this is enough. This is my engaging content group. Then I created a second group called Teaching Strategies, if you will. So same concept. I went into a URL, found a eight ways to teach climate change to almost any classroom. I found another website article called You Can Teach About Climate Change in Every Subject in Grade Level, Here's How. And then I also found a website, 20 Classroom Management Strategies and Techniques. So just kind of showing you don't have to be all about the content, but this is about my teaching strategies. And then I added a document called Lesson Timing Guidelines, a document in here. 
which is actually a document I have on my hard drive, which are the lesson timing guidelines. I'm showing Poppy that this is how I run my 50 minute class and what happens. And so we add that document in there, but let's create a third group. So this third group will be the lesson materials group. So I'll go over here and click down here on this folder, which creates a new group and it pulls up this window and I'll zoom in a little bit so we can type and we'll call this lesson materials. And so now this is where I can add documents that's kind of important to how I teach. So for example, I might want to attach my assignment instructions, my grading ru rubric, my lesson plan template, my student worksheet template. So these are all templates that I want to give Poppy. So for example, I want the student worksheet template to look like this. I want my assignment instructions to look like this. And then of course I've got an Excel spreadsheet that has a grading rubric which has all my grading criteria. These are all kind of my lesson plans engage the LLM with what my classroom works, how it works for me as a teacher. So I'll go ahead and add these the same way down here. I'll add these documents and I'll add them into my lesson plans. So I can drop those files into here. So now we can start engaging the large language model and getting some important information and creating the lesson plan. So how do we do that? Well, we've got everything in Poppy in the groups that we want. Now we go over here and we click down here on the AI chat button. So the AI chat button will bring up this window here. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. And this is when we can start engaging with the large language model. And the cool thing about Poppy is you get a couple large language model options in the chat window here. We can use Claude 3.5 or GPT-40 or GPT-40 Mini. Mini is if you want to kind of quick answers. You don't want to use as many credits up here. I got 2,000 credits for reading for this month. I've used 36, but I'm ready to go. I like Claude. With, that's what we're going to use. Now, my strategy is I'm going to first kind of engage this engaging content group, and I'm going to attach this to the chat uh, window. And what I'm going to do is have it extract the elements from that what do they think is best would be perfect for a middle school lesson on climate change. So I'm going to put the prompt in here now. And so you can see the prompt here, analyze the content in my engaging content group and tell me which piece would be most effective for introducing climate change to middle school students. And let's see how it does. And how cool is this? Claude within Poppy gives me this based on available content. They think that the climate change 101 Bill Nye video is good and the what the difference between weather and climate, the NASA climate kids, and the atmospheric river TikTok video. The other content pieces might be too technical or specific. So even though I brought everything in there, it's giving me what it thinks is gonna be best for a lesson plan. That's gonna be my next step. So essentially what I wanna do now is I wanna attach my lesson materials to the uh, chat bot. And then I wanna put in, I'm gonna attach my teaching strategies as well. And then I'm gonna put in the following prompt. So I'm saying using my lesson plan, the content you've analyzed, create a 50 minute lesson plan that uses the recommended elements you provided to me above. Follow my lesson plan template exactly. This is actually what I provided them, okay? And I said, and then also adjust my lesson plan to incorporate some of the elements in my teaching strategies group, which are some of these elements in these articles up here, including my lesson timeline guidelines. And let's see how it does. And look at the output here. It followed my template exactly, giving me a, a lesson title, the learning objectives, the standards alignment, materials needed, lesson structure, the hook activity, direct instruction, what I would talk about, student practice, closure. And it's following my timeline template too that I provided up here in this lesson timely guideline. So it's following all of that, which is pretty cool. So this is good. And so the other nice thing about this is if I like the output, again, I could go back and forth, but for the sake of the demo, let's assume I'm happy with it. I can copy all of this or whatever I want to copy. We can see there's a little Notion editor up here at the right. And you open that up and it's just an editor. You can add notes so I can copy and paste things. Because you know, if you're using large language models, sometimes you get these long conversations, you lose and you got little nuggets and you can't remember where it is. So if you find a little nugget that you want to save, Inside Poppy, they got this little notion editor that makes things cool. And then I could just minimize it here. Okay. So now what's next? What else can I do that? I've got the lesson plan. What's my next step? 
Well, let's say that we want to modify the lesson plan, and maybe we just thought of something. But I'm going to show you an example where I could record something, like a voice memo up here, and we're going to modify the plan. So let me just show you kind of the, the power of this. So I'm going to start recording. Hey, quick note to myself about the climate change lesson objectives. I want to make sure that we cover three main things. First, I want to make sure the students really need to understand the basics. You know, the difference between weather and climate and what greenhouse gases actually are and that kind of foundation. Last year, the students really got confused about this. Second, I, w I want them to see real-world examples. And so the videos that we have, I had a video about melting glaciers that really helped last time. So maybe if you know something about melting glaciers that we could add in there, that would be good. And third, this is really important. We need to make it actionable. Last year's class got a little bit overwhelmed and discouraged. So let's make sure we include some positive aspects of climate solutions and things that they can actually do. And then, oh yeah, don't forget, we've got a couple ESL students and Maria with the IEP who'll need some modified materials. The visuals from some of those videos may help them grasp some of those concepts. So maybe we could break into two sessions instead of cramming into one. Need to think about that. Okay, so now it's done generating. I'm going to take this and attach that transcript, and I'm going to put in the following prompt. So I'm saying based on my voice memo about climate change lesson goals and student needs, which is down here, Please modify the lesson plan to include visual support for the ESL students, provide appropriate accommodations for Maria, and offer extension activities for advanced learners. Let's see how it does. And so as we go up here and look at this, it looks like it incorporated some of those things. So let's see, added, connect climate change to local and personal experiences, modified materials for the IAP, simplified note-making template, audio recording options for responses, added display visual weather symbols while discussing, and modified for accessibility. So how cool is that, that it added and modified, it told me what it modified and added, all based on that voice memo that I just added off the top of my head. So that is just, a, I think, a, such a cool feature that we can do that. So what's next? So I put in a prompt, create a student worksheet using my template. So I got a worksheet in here, a template, a PDF follows the format of that template and incorporates engaging questions about the real world examples. Let's see what it comes up with. There we go. So how cool is this? It's definitely following the format. So we've got the topic, the name, the key concepts, define the following terms, your own words. The format's kind of a little weird in this box, but that's okay. We can copy this and put it into our Word document and, and adjust it, but it's define the following terms visual support, content connections. After watching Bill Nye's Climate Change 101, what surprised you the most about how Earth's temperatures change? Draw and label get greenhouse effect. The video mentioned the Mississippi River. Look outside your classroom, describe this. Real world example. NASA showed the glaciers are melting. What might happen? Critical thinking. Reflection. How cool is that? Again, it's, it's taking that Again, the, the output or the, the recommended videos that we had, everything, and then it created a worksheet for us. Maybe let's do one more example and let's see, see how it works. Okay, I put a prompt in here that says, create a complete assignment instruction sheet that lists all our digital resources, explain how students will use each video slash article, provides clear steps for the activities, and include submission guidelines that match our rubric. Let's see how it goes. All right, let's see how we did here. Assignment instruction template due date so this is what we would hand out to the students again we would copy this and put it into our format overview in this assignment you explore the differences the learning objectives the required materials which videos to watch assignment steps watch view step two complete the student worksheet which we created choose one extension activity standard level advanced level final product your submission should include submission guidelines the link submit deadline by this date, success tips, need help. Amazing. So just to recap and looking at the board, the visual elements, I created groups, grabbed engaging content from the web, videos, websites, created a teaching strategies, things that I wanted to incorporate in there and website, my own guidelines, my own lesson materials, my templates for my lesson plan, my worksheets, my grading rubric, and my assignment instructions. And then I added a video memo on its own, edited it on the fly, and then we all attach it to this chat. We use Claude, we could have used ChatGPT, and we came up with all that material in just a matter of minutes. So this is amazing. Now, I'm not a teacher, but that's the whole point. I wanted to show you just kind of the power of me, someone that doesn't know much about education or training, but just after talking to my friend as a teacher, 
and showing, you know, taking some of her elements on how she grades and everything else and just bringing everything together all in one. And you can just use your brain and grab things from the ether, from the web, from your own materials, from your own documents, your own images, whatever the case may be, bring them all together and then start having this conversation in the large language model, giving it all the context. Because remember, context is king. And this is why I love Poppy, because you've got this visual element, this whiteboard. You've got videos out on the internet. You've got your own documents on your hard drive. You've got things in your head that pop up and you can record a video. You can bring all those elements together. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Excel spreadsheets, documents, PDFs. Again, your own voice memo as you're talking about things. Bring it all together and then start having this conversation in the large language model. Because context is king. You can do it in Claude without Poppy, but you're going to have to attach, you're going to have to do things, but it's so nice to be able to see things, move things around, connect things, disconnect things. In a matter of minutes, I came up with a lesson plan. I'm not even a teacher, right? So anyway, what do you think, guys? This is a, a long demo of Poppy AI. Again, I am an affiliate for it. So if you want to use it, you can click the link down in the notes below. I use this for my own brand, for AI Ninja, for my masterminds, for my content creation, for my TikTok videos, for my web copy, for redesigning my websites, for helping my mastermind students, for helping anybody. This is a great tool. So let me know what you think. I answer every comment. Reach out to me at AI Ninja.pro, and hopefully I'll see you on the inside. <laughs>